Dear friends, welcome to a personalized episode of Enlighten Me. Today, we'll explore OpenAI's new reasoning models and affordable coding tools, Meta's data scraping controversy, and DryMerge's AI-driven app workflows. We'll also discuss Artisan's AI employees, Y Combinator's cohort expansion, and Reverian's innovative biogas technology. OpenAI has launched a new series of reasoning models called OpenAI 01 Preview, designed to solve complex problems in science, coding, and math. These models spend more time thinking before responding, much like a person. The first model is now available in ChatGPT and the API, with regular updates expected. In tests, the model excelled in tasks like the International Mathematics, Olympiad, and Code Forces coding competitions. It outperformed previous models significantly in both reasoning and safety adherence. OpenAI 01 Mini is a smaller, cost effective version focused on coding. ChatGPT Plus and team users can access these models today with rate limits in place. ChatGPT Enterprise and Edu users will get access next week. API access is also available for qu qualifying developers. Future updates will include additional features like browsing and file uploading. Gemini Live, initially available to advanced subscribers, is now rolling out to free users on Android. This feature allows natural, conversational exchanges, even letting you interrupt with new information. Access it via a circular waveform icon with a sparkle in the Gemini app. It offers a full-screen experience with hold and end buttons, and you can exit the UI while Gemini Live runs in the background. After ending a conversation, you get a text transcript in the history section, allowing you to restart it. Currently, Gemini Live doesn't support extensions like Gmail or YouTube Music, but this is expected in the future. Gemini Live introduces 10 new voices, including Nova, Ursa, Vega, Pegasus, Orbit, Lyra, Orion, Dipper, Eclipse, and Capella with a British accent. The rollout begins today for English Android users, with more languages coming soon. Let's now turn our attention to the ethical implications. Meta has admitted to scraping all public Facebook and Instagram posts made since 2007 to train its generative AI model. This revelation came during a public inquiry in Australia, but applies globally. Previously, Meta had only discussed plans to use posts and photos for AI training, not that it had been doing so for years. CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced in June that the company had more user data than what was used to train ChatGPT and planned to use it for its own AI systems. This has raised significant privacy and toxicity concerns. Meta was required to offer opt-outs in the European Union and United Kingdom, but not elsewhere. During the Australian inquiry, Meta's global privacy director, Melinda Claybaugh, admitted the company had been scraping public posts since 2007, excluding accounts of those under 18, but including photos of children posted by parents. Platforms like Zapier have long connected apps that do not typically integrate, but they remain complex for non-technical users. Generative AI has eased this somewhat, but technical skills are still often required. Developers Sam Brassiers and Edward Fraser faced these challenges at companies like Meta and Stripe. They believed generative AI could simplify data transformations between APIs, leading them to create DryMerge, a chatbot for building app workflows. DryMerge lets users describe automations in natural language, like notifying a team on Slack and adding contacts to HubSpot when receiving an email. Despite some bugs, the platform shows promise, successfully automating tasks such as copying social media posts to Discord. Funded by a $2.2 million seed round and part of Y Combinator's Winter 2024 batch, DryMerge aims to expand its app integrations and team, focusing on ease of use for non-technical users. 
For now, let's focus on NotePin's audio quality. Plaud's NotePin is a $169 voice recorder that effectively transcribes, summarizes, and extracts key information from audio. The technology behind it, from tiny microphones to AI summarization, is mature and reliable. However, its main drawback is that similar features are already available on many smartphones and devices. For instance, iOS 18 and macOS Sequoia include transcription and summarization in the Voice Memos app, and Google's Pixel Recorder app offers excellent functionality on Pixel devices. The NotePin is user-friendly and comes with accessories like a lanyard, wristband, and clip for easy access. Its battery life is decent, lasting around 18 hours of recording or 30 days on standby. Despite its convenience, the Plaud app requires manual steps to transcribe and summarize recordings, adding unnecessary effort. Additionally, it lacks integration with other apps, making it less useful compared to built-in phone features. Join us as we explore the implications for AI ethics. OpenAI is set to transition from its complex non-profit structure to a more traditional for-profit company next year while maintaining a non-profit division. Chief Executive Officer Sam Altman announced this change during a staff meeting. Although specific details weren't provided, a spokesperson emphasized that the non-profit aspect remains central to OpenAI's mission. Founded in 2015 as a non-profit, OpenAI struggled to fund its research solely through donations, raising only $130.5 million. To address this, it created a for-profit subsidiary, controlled by the non-profit entity. This structure limits profits for investors, directing excess earnings to the non-profit division. OpenAI's revenue has surged, particularly from the subscription-based ChatGPT service. The company's non-profit board briefly ousted Altman in 2023, but he was reinstated after the board was replaced. And now, pivot our discussion towards startup stories. Artisan, a Y Combinator-backed startup founded in 2023, is revolutionizing the future of work with AI-driven automation. They have raised over $7.5 million in seed funding from investors like Y Combinator, Bond Capital, and Soma Capital. Artisan's flagship product, a team of AI employees called Artisans, is designed to automate entire job functions, starting with sales and eventually expanding into marketing, customer success, and other go-to-market verticals. Artisan's unique value lies in its ability to replace manual tasks traditionally performed by roles such as SDRs, copywriters, and customer support specialists. Unlike existing tools like Apollo and Outreach, Artisan aims to replace every outbound sales tool needed by automating the entire sales process. This focus on automation has led to impressive growth. They've achieved a $700,000 increase in annual recurring revenue in just two months. CEO Jasper Carmichael Jack emphasizes their dedication to creating the best automated user experience, which has driven their rapid adoption and success. Their innovative approach ensures that users can focus on meaningful work by automating repetitive tasks. By Combinator, or YC, the renowned startup accelerator behind successful companies like Airbnb and Stripe, is expanding its program to four cohorts a year from the previous two. This change, initiated by President Gary Tan, means that YC will now operate nearly year-round. The new schedule introduces spring and fall cohorts, adding to the traditional winter and summer sessions, and each cohort will last about 11 weeks, capped with an investor, demo day. Under this new structure, cohort sizes will be roughly halved to around 100 startups, compared to the 256 in the most recent batch. This adjustment aims to address concerns that the program had become too large and diluted. Despite the smaller cohort sizes, the total number of startups going through the program annually 
will remain steady at about 500. Each YC company receives a $500,000 investment, including $125,000 for a 7% equity stake and $375,000 on terms determined at the next funding round. The restructuring allows YC to be more responsive to founders and provide more individualized attention, potentially increasing the value of its extensive network. Now, we're about to explore their market strategy. Stefan Herrmann, initially working on his PhD in Munich, has co-founded Reverian with Felix Fischer, and now boasts a $100 million backlog of orders and a fresh $62 million Series A funding round. Reverian's power plant uses biogas from agricultural waste to generate power. Herrmann's innovation lies in making these plants up to 80% more efficient than existing ones, producing double the output of conventional gas engines and generating renewable natural gas or green hydrogen. Reverian uses hydrogen fuel cells and a unique system architecture to eliminate losses and increase efficiency. The plant is carbon negative due to integrated CO2 separation, allowing the CO2 to be liquefied and transported for industrial use or sequestration. This technological leap attracted investment from Energy Impact Partners, Honda, and the European Innovation Council Fund, enabling industrial-scale production. Reverian's primary customers, farmers and industrial plants, benefit from doubled biogas output and new revenue from liquefied CO2. The technology also aids compliance with environmental regulations. Reverian competes with companies like Bloom Energy, but differentiates itself by directly removing atmospheric carbon and producing green hydrogen, replacing fossil fuels. Today, we covered OpenAI's advancements in reasoning models and affordable coding solutions, Meta's data scraping admissions, and the rise of AI-driven automation with startups like Artisan and Drymerge. Stay tuned for more updates. Dear friends, 